Hello and welcome to the next video in the MeanStack.js how-to series. In this video we're going to be talking about the file naming structure. And this is a really key component to understand in our stack because it's how we uh, keep track of everything in the sense of on the front end what needs to be loaded first. How do we know what has an importance over anything else? Uh, since we haven't put weights in yet or anything like that we need to be able to know, hey, what's important? Is a module more important than a controller? Which it is. Or is a directive more important than a controller? Which it's not. It's not stuff like that. So you can also come in the stack and reorder everything you're on your own. You don't need us to do it. But we take the liberty in the beginning to at least say, hey, that's a module. That needs to be declared first. Then controllers. Then directives. And so on and so forth. So we want to get into that today. So let's jump right on over to the wiki page. And in the wiki page, we have a uh, file, well, a page named file naming structure, which might change in the future from this video. So don't hold me to that. Now, let's talk about this. There are, we have laid out here in this table, there are, there's ways to uh, have a file type identifier on the front end and the back end. And this is what we mean when we say uh, file naming structure is you have a unique name, then you have your file type identifier, and then you have your file extension. So a file type identifier is from the list below. So if you have a module, which is what declares, you know, modules in Angular on the front end, then these probably are really important and that's why we need to know these type of things and so we have some examples below but I'll talk to some of the examples so like controllers are very important and they're more important than factories uh, sometimes more important than routes styles and views so those will go for and all that but modules are more important than controllers and so this helps us to start organizing saying hey what do we need to load into the front end first and so that file type identifiers is what really allows us to orchestrate some of the things for you guys on the back end now you can use uh, I do believe we will be in the future adding like a miscellaneous or something so that you know if you don't know which any of these any of them are it'll just automatically put it in at the end now granted right now if you put anything in any one of these it automatically adds it to the end but uh, we know that's not necessarily always the best you know, it's much rather to have a convention with it than not at all so we'll add something like a miscellaneous or something but at, at the end of the day as long if you don't put anything with it anyway and you just label it something else we'll load it in last but that's just how it goes uh, so switching over to the back end, there's only three things that really matter to us right now. Uh, models, controllers, and routes inside of modules. So modules, uh, when we see those, we take those and we'll put them right with Mongoose and we'll put them with a schema and we'll register them. And then we'll do all that before any controllers or routes get registered so that everything is ready to go when, by the time one of your controllers run. Uh, we don't actually do anything with controllers. We do not load those anywhere at all. We leave those in the back end just as they are. Because in the routes is where you normally will uh, directly tie to a specific controller. Now routes, we do register with an express for you. But we do it in the order of models then routes. And controllers don't actually get touched at all like I just said except in the routes. And so the back end is a lot simpler to understand than the front end. Now. We have some more examples down here. We have the blog controller.js, the blog model.js, and the blog routes.js. So, to give a brief uh, or give a brief showing of if you want to go mess with that, which I know some people do, or if you want to change the order because your app requires the customization, that's fine. We'll show you down here in the server folder. Let me close that up. You shall see a register, a passport, a middleware, mail, error, and environment. These are some of our main files that uh, handle the backend logic. And specifically, our register file, register.js, is what registers all of our modules for us. It registers them, organizes everything, decides what to send back to the client, decides how to register everything. 
especially it well not especially but it does this on initial loadout and it does it one time one time only so let's scroll down and show you if you wanted to change something let's show you where to change it so if you want to look through the code you can see the main register model will call set up the get the environment get the mail provider it'll get some of the options from the app that's getting passed in it'll get the settings the middleware and basically all the initial information right off the bat it'll get some more info it'll get the directories it'll get the configurations it'll do a transform if you're using Babel but here's where the important part comes create the backend models create the backend routes create the uh, global style and then create the front end and so these uh, four functions directly correlate to those file identifiers. So this is what we need the file identif identifiers for. And if we scroll, let's say we scroll down to front end modules. You'll see down here, well, this is actually where it's already sending it out. Let's scroll back up to where we're gathering information, which is actually the config state. And so you'll see here we have laid out kind of our front end files, what we're expecting and what our final files are between just JavaScript and CSS. Well, once we come down here, we kind of, well, we for loop over the entire folders because we grabbed all the information and we then for loop over all of our files we have. And so then we have a big switch statement based off uh, model, uh, controller, route, but you, you see as it's going down how they all lump together and some of the special features that happen like with CSS, we also then have to uh, do some extra rendering and some other things like that to uh, get the less than this has to work. And then you'll see though, if you see a JSON or view or a spec, it doesn't do anything at all. We commented it out. And then lastly, if you just see uh, default, if you just see nothing or something with just a JS, we'll just push it at the very end. But once all that's done, it'll send the files, which will go then down to the create font or create front end, and it'll register all these and send them back to the front end, or send them to the server, which sends them to the front end whenever you call a file. So that's it for this. If you want to go and change something, I know this part's advanced. I'm going to be doing another video on it down the road about how to come in here and manipulate the register more. But I wanted to leave you with the ability to at least see where how it organizes it and where it's coming from so that's it for uh, this video if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment below or reach out to us and that's it for this video